good afternoon and uh, it's a pleasure to be in this uh, meeting again this is the fifth one and i attended first few but then i uh, dropped out uh, for in last uh, two but it's, it's really uh, nice to see uh, this community and uh, meet people <clears throat> and uh, i hope uh, to tell you a little bit uh, what i am doing let's say in last uh, few years so this is the work which is uh, done in collaboration with uh, uh, the chair of this session soris and uh, one student, uh, Indrajit Ka from uh, TI for Hyderabad, and with uh, Chandan. <clears throat> so this is something which uh, we are looking at uh, in, uh, with Chandan and Srikant for quite some time now. So, uh, and this is uh, related to dynamic heterogeneity in uh, glassy system, supercooled liquids. So let me quickly tell you what is uh, dynamic heterogeneity. In general, uh, if you look at normal liquid, then relaxation at one part uh, will be very similar to any other uh, part. So there won't be any uh, dissimilarity in dynamics, spatial. But that once you go to uh, in a supercooled regime, then this starts to happen. So this is one uh, colloid experiment where uh, so the color coding is such that wherever you see this uh, bigger circles, these are the particles which are moving faster. And then there are these uh, blue dots, which are the particles which are not moving that fast. So <clears throat> and one sees that uh, there are these bigger uh, particles, they form clusters. So all the, all the clusters, uh, are colored with the same color. Like uh, this cluster is with red and then this green. So this clustering is happening. And as you go to, so for the colloid, as you go to deeper and deeper into a uh, super cool state, where by increasing the density, the cluster uh, becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. <clears throat> no, 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 particles are, uh, so generally you take binary mixture, but uh, it's irrespective of the particle size. And uh, so this is one simulation where also this has been uh, shown. So the, the blue region is something which is not moving very fast. But then you see in, in between there are regions which are uh, color coded according to red and greenish. So they are uh, moving much faster. So dynamic uh, is very heterogeneous uh, in the whole system. And this evolves. So as you, uh, as you uh, wait longer and longer, then this blue region may, may become more dynamic. Some of this region may will become uh, slow. So this will uh, go on and that's what uh, is, is called the dynamic heterogeneity. And the people are uh, trying to looking at uh, some of this aspect for quite some time and try to find out whether it's uh, some uh, critical uh, behavior associated with this or can we uh, find out uh, the corresponding scale over which this is happening. And this is the one which we did uh, quite some time ago in uh, 2009 with Chandan and Srikant. We, uh, 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 we looked at the higher order correlation function. So in this, uh, so I don't have much time to tell why you need to do, go to higher order correlation function. But basically, uh, lower order or the two point correlation function is not good enough. One needs to go to fourth order uh, correlation function. And this is, this is the quantity which uh, has all the signature. <clears throat> and what we looked at is the finite size effect of this four point uh, susceptibility, chi 4. And you indeed see that at uh, higher temperature, there is not uh, much system size dependence. But as you go to lower and lower temperature, the system size dependence picks up. And we then did uh, scaling analysis to show that there is a growing scale. This is the dynamic heterogeneity length scale, what we are talking about. And you see the, we got reasonable collapse after uh, uh, collecting data for quite some time, maybe more than one and a half year. <clears throat> and uh, we also showed that uh, this finite size scaling method was, uh, uh, is actually interesting uh, and is much more feasible than uh, to follow the standard structural uh, quantities like S4 uh, QT is the structure factor, what uh, Joydeep talked about and use Onstein journey relation to get the length scale. So for, if you want to really use this, you have to go to very large system size. But then, uh, so our method of finite size scaling uh, will be much more applicable in general. <clears throat> this is the old story. And then there are, uh, then uh, Certain other things came up. There is uh, the dynamic length scale seems to be not enough. There are also static length scales. And there are lots of uh, literature, like there are different ways to do it. Point to set, uh, patch reputation, curvature of uh, local potential energy minimum, finite size scaling of relaxation time. And we have written uh, two review uh, papers, which, uh, yeah, so I, 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 uh, I, yeah, you can look at it and uh, to get full details about uh, this. <coughs> Basic, uh, so my aim is to tell you that uh, this length scale of uh, dynamic heterogeneity length scale and the static length scale. So there are many different ways to do it. But then uh, we, uh, okay, so let's uh, not go into details of this because I will then run out of time. Uh, so this is one way of calculating uh, static length scale. So let me skip this because this is not the story I'm going to tell you. 
uh, okay, so this is all, let me skip also this. So there are a lot of colloidal experiments now uh, happening in, uh, in the glass field and uh, to get uh, this dynamic and static link scale is a big issue in colloid experiment because if I ask a colloid experimentalist to do finite size scaling then you will say uh, uh, this is all in your theorist mind you, you can just forget about it you cannot do finite size scaling in uh, colloid experiment because uh, for that experiment you have a bigger sample and you only look at uh, some portion of this when you do uh, this uh, video imaging of it and there uh, you cannot just change uh, system size right it doesn't make any sense because you are uh, in a grand canonical ensemble You're looking at portion of a system in a bigger uh, ensemble so that's the reason why uh, they uh, try to do something called pinning experiment and then uh, so basic point is that it's a very uh, uh, cumbersome job to get this uh, length scale out uh, in colloid experiment <laughs> You can look at uh, this paper by uh, from Rajesh Ganpati's lab and with uh, Ajay Shuth. And so now I want to tell you a certain uh, interesting uh, way of calculating this. So this is the work recently uh, appeared in uh, PRL. So there we proposed a new method of calculating this uh, dynamic and uh, static link scale in one go. And this is uh, applicable even for colloid experiment. But the idea is that if you have uh, some system uh, like this is a one model system and then what you do you just uh, break the system into more smaller chunks you uh, you make uh, blocks so like uh, this is uh, as it is schematically done schematically shown so then you have then you look at uh, these small blocks and this uh, these are different blocks and look at the statistics of these blocks okay so instead of different system size now you are looking at uh, how the sky four or any other quantity how that depends on block block size and try to see whether uh, some of this information can be extracted and indeed so, so these are okay you can, you can skip all of this these are the different model system we uh, studied these are all very good glass formers which has been studied for quite some time this is one more system which is quality dispersed system which is uh, somewhat closer to uh, colloid uh, glasses <coughs> and these are all uh, details so basically what we are calculating we are taking a big simulation box and dividing into a smaller box then you are calculating two point and the four point correlation function within this uh, sub units and try to look at uh, how these quantities uh, changes with uh, increasing size of this sub unit and this is the data so if you uh, remember this was the old data which i was showing where i am plotting the susceptibility as a function of system size and uh, it goes up and become and saturate at some point then you can do a scaling so we are doing the same thing uh, now with the, this blocks as one of our systems you see that here also you see chi 4 goes up with increasing block size and you can do fantastic scaling scaling collapse so the comparison between this scaling collapse you can already see how good it is so this is because in the blocks as you take smaller and smaller chunks then there are a lot of samples which you are averaging so that's why the scaling becomes impressive and also we showed that the data you get is is as far with the previous uh, results so it's uh, validating our uh, previous works but also shows the better way to calculate uh, this uh, quantities <clears throat> and uh, we also tested it for uh, different model systems and all of them it works uh, very nicely the scaling always observed to be very good so as now we have a very good uh, scaling uh, collapse we tried to see whether uh, we can uh, do No, but this is not scaled. This one. Oh, so that's because here you can go to much smaller system size. And for the normal system size, the normal simulation. Ah, so you're saying that if I only look at here. Even if you zoom in, uh, the quality is uh, even much better than this. So that uh, one can, yeah, we, we can look at it actually. <coughs> so, so then we can, uh, as uh, we have a bigger range of uh, scaling collapse, we can try to do certain, uh, we can do one step forward and try to ask these questions. So this is the scaling function we used. Chi 4 goes as so chi naught, which only depends on temperature, and the scaling function, which depends on the, uh, the block size divided by the length scale. This is the scaling function. 
then uh, as the, the argument of uh, the scaling function goes to infinity then it, go, it should go to uh, 1 because it saturates but uh, on the other hand if jid goes to infinity or lb is small then uh, in one of the cases let's say jid goes to infinity then uh, if you calculate the susceptibility susceptibility should depend only on the system size so if you uh, put uh, these are the exponent uh, then you can show that at uh, so if uh, the scaling function f of x at small x should go like x to the power 2 minus eta. So 2 minus eta is this uh, anomalous dimension. So calculating anomalous dimension uh, with the previous uh, data wasn't very easy. Now with uh, this uh, nice scaling data, we, we, we can actually try to get uh, some insight of it. And uh, you see that, uh, okay, so, so this is the relation which uh, we used before. So you plot uh, the n tends to infinity value of susceptibility for different temperature as a function of uh, length scale and then the exponent is 2 minus eta. The same thing we are now trying from the scaling function itself. <coughs> so this is that uh, data and uh, this is the power law which we are trying to fit. But and then uh, the this power law and this power law, uh, the exponents are same. Okay. And uh, so now, yeah, so basically the idea is that uh, with all different models, uh, what we are finding that this exponent eta is uh, well, probably close to zero within this uh, error bar. <coughs> so there, is, there is some sort of universality in even in this uh, glassy disorder systems. So this is one uh, one take home message. For and the other point is that uh, so as I told you before, the static length scale uh, to calculate static length scale, you need to do many other uh, things like uh, something called point to set. Then there is uh, scaling other scaling analysis, but. Uh, what was bonus for this analysis was that using the same analysis you can also get static length scale. So for that what we defined uh, is this, we looked at how uh, relaxation fluctuates in different, uh, different sub blocks and you look at uh, the corresponding susceptibility of uh, that uh, uh, time scale fluctuation so as defined here and if you do the scaling analysis of uh, that in the same, exactly the same way, it picks up the static length scale. <clears throat> this has been tested for all other model system and if you, so this is the comparison, so yeah, so the, there are black dots, the, there are green and there are red. So red is from the block analysis we are uh, proposing and uh, so we hope that uh, now with this new method, uh, the colloid data will be also tested and uh, some of this uh, scale can be uh, extracted in colloid also and uh, hopefully uh, we will be able to make some progress to understand the uh, physics of class transition in this liquid and also for colloid system. So these are uh, let's say some of the conclusions that I need not uh, repeat again. And so, yeah, if you are interested, you can uh, have a look at this paper. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it has any non-zero value, the numbers that we are quoting here, it appears it is negative uh, actually, uh, but uh, in critical phenomena it is uh, positive, so 2D 0.25, uh, 0 0.04, something like that, uh, yeah, but why, the, what is the significance of this? Uh, whether it is negative or not that, uh, we, yeah, so with this I think we won't be able to say much. No, so 2.39 for example is very different from 2. Uh, no, no, but also you have to believe whether uh, this, this is the power law which you are looking at. So I think the error bar is uh, of the same size. So unless we have uh, data which goes here, and then you have a very nice uh, power law. So this is the problem of uh, this field where the length scale doesn't grow very rapidly, and uh, within the simulation range you, you cannot do much. And maybe in uh, colloid also, I don't know whether colloid can access bigger length scale or bigger uh, time scale. Okay. But uh, there was some hope that. Now this is accessible in colloid experiment. You can just uh, take the video image and you do a block and do the analysis. This is just will be done in yeah, in a few minutes. Yes. We have to take the fourth order correlation function. So uh, in a very different context where they look at the uh, Fourier uh, based techniques, mm -hmm. one can actually take this uh, angular cross correlations. Uh, would that actually be helpful? I'm just, I don't know because in some experimental situations, uh, 
it is hard to actually take the fourth order correlation. Instead, one can actually switch over to angular cross correlations and still extract meaningful information. I'm just wondering whether that. But we have to, have to understand what is what exactly is angular correlation you are talking about. But in experiment, the way this uh, chi four is calculated, you can actually show this is the derivative of the two point correlation function with uh, one of your control variables, not temperature, but. Uh, so the, using that, you can get some sense of chi-4, even in experiment. So this has been done already. Thanks.